Hi, Holly Clark here from EdTech Team. I want to show you how to make a Canva. So your students, when they first get to canva.com, they're going to need to sign up. And it's as simple as putting in a, an email address or signing up with your Google account. So I'm going to uh, sign up here. And I've done that. And I already have an account, so it's going to recognize mine. And you can see I'm up there in the right-hand corner. And um, now I have the option of creating a design. And I'm going to do a Twitter post today, but I want you to see the other options you can have by clicking the plus button. And now I have um, documents that I can make. I can make marketing materials. I can do social media and email headers. So some people have those cute Facebook covers. They might do it here or their Twitter headers might have happened from here. But one of my favorites is this infographic option. So I am a big fan of having students use that in the classroom. But as promised, we're going to be making a Twitter post. So I might ask my students to make something that would summarize or restate something we've learned in class. They can go to the Twitter post and this is what will appear. It's sort of a blank stage. Uh, on the right hand, left hand side, I'm sorry, um, there are templates. And these come and these are really for... I believe, graphic designers to help them out or to give you some ideas of something to make, but they do come with paid elements. So I don't have students use them for that reason. Some of them may want to, that's up to them, but uh, they would have to pay for that on their own. So instead, I like to have them create from uh, a blank stage. To do that, you have to go over to this Uploads button right here. And when I do that, these are the pictures that I've uploaded. I happen to have uploaded already a picture from the War of 1812 to show you. But if you want to see how I did that, I took from my desktop, I threw into here. You'll see that it's uploading and it will appear, there it goes, um, right into my upload section. So I could use this War of 1812, but one of my problems with this is it already has text on it. And if I'm going to add text, it might be too busy. So I'm going to use this delete button and get, a, get rid of that. And instead, I'm going to use this other image I just uploaded. And I can do many things with this image. I can keep it over here and right in this area on the side. Or I could make it full stage, we'll call it, full screen, I guess. And I can do one of my favorite things. It's going up to the top where this little toolbar is and hitting filter. Once I hit filter, I have the options of making it, you know, maybe epic. That might be nice because certainly uh, wars are epic. But I like this advanced option where I can do stuff like blur the image. And when I blur the image, it can allow me to take the focal point off the image and put it onto my text. So I'm going to leave it right there with that blur and I'm going to click out of it. The next thing I'm going to do is have my students use um, some text. So they'll go over to the left hand side toolbar and hit text. It will give them these and some other options that they might want to use if they want to get fancy, but sometimes that gets a little too busy. So if you just click on add text, it will place it right on the stage. I'm going to put this up here so I can see what I'm typing and I'm going to add my text. So the war that kept us from being Canada. Not that there's anything wrong with being Canada, because I am a huge fan of Canada, but a, a kind of humorous way to look at that war. So now I want to change the font. I go back up to this toolbar. I'm using some font that they automatically do, but I don't like that font. So I'm going to go to something that might be a little uh, simpler. So I'm going to just use Cantora 1 see if I like that. I don't really love that. So I'm going to go to my favorite right now, which is Railway Heavy. Everyone has their favorite fonts, but I find this one looks really good when I'm designing. So I'm going to use that. And now I can move this around. I can do things like pressing this arrow and I can center my stuff. I could um, make it transparent. I can do all kinds of stuff once I hit this arrow. Um, I can change the size of the font if I want by clicking on it and this will come up. Maybe I want it to be instead 56, 
But now I can't see Canada very well, so I might change that around. But for the purposes of this, this is good enough. So I've made can use in class. That took me probably under two minutes. And once students get good at it, that's the beauty of it. It's really fast and easy. I do want to show you some other options that you could add. I really love this search area right here. If I hit the search button, all of these tools come up that I can use in Canva to make it much more interesting. I am a huge fan of frames. So let's say, for example, I wanted to put in a picture and not just someone's square picture they gave me. Maybe I, I want to add a, a round picture. Well, I can put in this frame and I can do uploads and I can go find a picture. Now I'm going to choose a picture of my friend Tanya. You'll see that it came up square, but if I throw it into there, it turns it, it puts it into that frame. And this is really appropriate because Tanya is Canadian. Um, but really, I'm just doing this to show you. I could also go back to search. If I click on this X, it'll take me back to the all of these different things I can do. I could add icons. Maybe I want to add an icon of a light bulb. Oh, so important. This whole thing about the War of 1812. And maybe I keep that there. Um, I obviously wouldn't add all of these things, but um, for the for the purposes of showing you, I wanted you to see what you could do using this search function. So uh, you could add charts, you could add photos, and actually the photos are quite interesting because they have a really large range of photos that come free, and so your students don't have to um, worry about Creative Commons. This is a really good way to have them find that photo in a quick and easy fashion. Um, so it just comes from looking at these and seeing what they ex or bring to the party, so to speak. Okay, so I've made this Canva. This one isn't one I would use, but I need to share it now with other students or my teacher, and what do I do? Well, I need to come up to uh, the upper right-hand corner where it says Download. I hit that, and I have the option to save as an image or PDF. I'm going to choose Image. And the great thing about the Chrome browser is that it's going to save it to the bottom of my Chrome browser window so that I have easy access to save it into a file or put it on my desktop or throw it onto a Padlet or some other great app smashing idea. So my design's ready. I can either open it and see it, which I'm going to do right now, and you're going to see it open, or I can just simply drag it over to my desktop. You see it's placing itself over here, and then I have it for easy access later. So thank you for watching, and um, I hope you enjoy Canva as much as I do, and make sure to join us at a Gave Summit in city near you. Thank you very much.